Tony Shaw with the Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. I'm in Derek uh, Wright's uh, drone studio, so to speak. Um, he builds drones from the ground up, uh, maintains them, and the reason he's into them is uh, Adam Hutzel. Adam Hutzel, a couple of years ago, sent us our first drone. Um, he donated it to us to help our Bigfoot effort, and since then we've taken off with it. We've seen that it's a really good tool. Um, I've asked uh, Derek from Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization to go through his, uh, his drones and his equipment, and uh, Derek's right here. Excellent. Well... Uh, looks a lot like and almost about as much equipment as what Kelly puts in that backpack of his every time he goes out, every one of them uh, game cams, etc. So we're just going to kind of get started. And again, I want to thank me personally because it affects me more than anybody else in RMSO. I want to thank Adam just because without him, I probably wouldn't have started doing this. And I know I wouldn't have. It, it just wouldn't have been something that really hit me. So when he sent us Squawk, which right here is a hex, and I'm going to make something for the first time. This is, this is pretty much a duplicate of what Adam sent, our first original Squawk that we got all of our original footage with. Um, we were out um, about, I don't know, it was last summer, I guess, was it, or was it before that? Talking to Kelly here, but uh, we were out about last summer. We were up on top of it was last some, July. Yeah. Some we were up on top of some mountains. Literally, we were at about a little over ten thousand feet up doing a couple sighting reports up on top of what we call Monte Cristo around here. And uh, I had already done um, uh, some footage and was just getting some additional footage of the area and learned a hard lesson. Um, whether or not return to home was supposed to work or not, or whether or not I didn't do something because I was still a little bit relatively new at it. Um, squawks somewhere's around 10,500 feet, if not further, because they were a good, I don't know, a couple hundred feet tall trees that I, I, I found this sweet little spot between some trees that I'd went through. Took it way up, and I thought I was high enough, and was just panning around, and was just going around, and it went in front of some trees, and I lost sight of it. So, um, lost connection, gone, spent, between myself, um, Shelly and the kids, and Kelly, and the other members of Rocky Mountain Sasquatch, we got probably 20 hours searching for that thing, and who knows, as high as we were, if that thing would have just kept going in the direction it was going, it would have landed somewhere in West Wyoming. It's gone. So um, we are actually going to go back up there and uh, throw a camera because we didn't have another drone at the time. So we didn't have another drone at the time, so we couldn't actually get up there. Personally, I think it's stuck couple hundred feet in the top of a tree is what I think. We got about a dozen uh, uh, videos on there. It's really worth recovering just for the SD oh, card. Oh, just, just for the videos alone it was worth actually covering because it is it was cool but we are going to get back up there and get some more aerial footage of that area because there's been a lot of sightings up there. That being said it in a sense was a good thing to happen because built from the ground up Build it from the ground up, you know. A couple of these others, um, a good buddy of ours, somebody that uh, has been in our circle of friends for a long time, flew a lot of helicopters, was big on helicopters, but I introduced him to a drones after this whole thing, and he has gone nuts. And he has built a couple of these other ones that he has built. So, um, before we get too far, if you are a Squatch, or, or if you are just new to the actual hobby itself, um, Sure, can you go out there? Anybody that's got a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks, three thousand dollars, whatever, you can go buy a really nice quality drone like the DJI Phantom 2 Vision, which is what we've been getting a lot of our footage with lately. And it does exceptionally well, and their newest one is going to be even better. 
because it's going to be doing 4K video, really nice. And, you know, that still keeps you under 2000 bucks. where if you go nuts and buy an Aspire, which I'm just going to say it right now. This is going overboard when it comes to actually squatching, as far as I'm concerned. Still not too expensive that, you know, worst case scenario, something happens, it happens. You can recover from it, but I don't think an Aspire one has any business being at 10,000 feet looking for a Bigfoot. That is a very nice quality piece of equipment that it's got different purposes. So, um, just like this has got very certain limits and purposes for, um, for squatching. And in, in all honesty, there's been plenty of times, um, take for example, the first, um, it's our epic Bigfoot expedition. Um, I can't tell you how many times that one of us caught, I, I mean, something literally up on the side hill moving behind trees. You saw it moving behind the trees, but you can never get sight because it kept itself out. Well, you're not going to be able to, you know, you're, you just hike back in four miles um, they do have backpacks for these, and you can do it. Not that big of a deal, but at the end of the day, if you're backpacking in, whether it's a mile, whether it's five miles, whether it's what, as long as you got the equipment to take care of yourself and make sure you can get back out and fit this on your back, do it. Do it. Why not? I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful device. But you know what? Simply put, uh, you can put 50 batteries in your backpack, you got a 720p camera, and if it flies up and ends up in West Wyoming, who cares? I paid 40 bucks from it, you know what I mean? And I'll tell you right now, this is the most indestructible toy that I've come across, and we got a couple of them running around here, and, and, and Greg and I have dog fights to see them take each other out of the air. I mean, this thing literally keep sticking and it flies like a tent. Um, that being said, squatching, um, I had a little 250 and another little embarrassing moment for myself. Um, had a little 250 that I just barely started getting, I just got it put together, ran like a freaking top and I, it, it's fast, extremely fast, specifically for FPV, but I was just getting into the FPV, first time actually doing the goggles and stuff, which Everybody asks whether or not we can actually see. Here, I'm getting off on tangents. I'm just, just talking. So, um, uh, we do. We do. I, I have a pair of fat shot goggles that I spent quite a bit of money on. Um, before you go off and spend your money on some fat shot goggles, uh, if you're just getting into it, try something a little bit cheaper just to find out whether or not it's going to be for you because FPV literally is not for everybody. You can get disoriented. Uh, it's a little bit. There's a learning curve in in actually doing and it. And if you're anything like me and you have a problem with seasickness, you might start puking your guts out. Okay. Yep, yep, it, it, very easily. Um, right here. Um, anybody that's with <laughs> you know in FPV in at all or getting into drones and stuff probably knows what this is already. But these are some quantum goggles. Um, that I got from Hobby King for 30 bucks. Um, you have to assemble them. Um, I, I could have handed them to a fifth, you know, kindergartner and he probably could have put them together for you. Very simple. I did not glue mine together because I'd just soon be able to get back into it. So I just got it. Frankly, hair ties holding them together. But 30 bucks and you get a bigger screen. It's a nice clear screen and it's going to allow you to find out whether or not this might be something for you. And who knows, you might like these or this better than the Fat Shark goggles. It's really up to you, but it's worth the 30 bucks, that's for sure. Um, me personally, and- Would you um actually put that up to your face and, oh. put, and put the goggles on to kind of show people how they're used? Um, um, FAA guidelines, you need a spotter when you're using these and it's a good idea to always have a spotter because they're looking through the camera and uh, the spotter is supposed to keep the um, the actual vehicle in sight so 
I get the spot for Derek while he has these on. I just wanted you to put them on to show people, you know, you're only looking through the camera. It's as if you're the pilot on oh, the Oh, you the absolutely craft. see absolutely nothing else but but the but the screen itself. You are blind to anything other than... And he's got these the straps that wrap, wrap around the back of his head so it stays right on there. So, you know, it's not something that you want to be walking around with while you're flying your FPV. You're kind of going to be stationary with those. Um... We're going to elaborate that a little bit further because Kelly decided he wanted to bring up the FAA. Um, FAA, obviously everybody knows now that, you know, laws are coming, regulations are coming, and whether you like it or not, it's something that you're actually going to have to live with. So, you know, figure out what those regulations are in your area because, you know, it's interpreted different depending on where you go. Um, I would call it local. FAA office, which is exactly what I have done on multiple times just to get updates on what the regulations are from here. Um, in Utah, it's 500 feet, five miles from an airport. Um, you can't go over 100 miles an hour, no matter how big or small the actual drone is. No flying at night. And um, one thing that honestly I was extremely happy about from the email that I read that was sent to me from one of the FAA officers uh, here in Utah. Um, as like Kelly said, as long as you have a spotter, FPV is a possibility and you can use it. Um, that's not limited to a spotter that is standing right there next to you. Mind you, you're going to have to have one right there next to you, but we could be sitting say, Anybody that watches this is familiar with Sasquatch Canyon, and that thing's 35, 40 miles long, okay? Um, you could actually have people, as long as you have a walkie-talkie um, and communication between you and that spotter, you can fly it. So if you have some UHF, low-frequency, you know, long-distance equipment that you can use, you can still use it as long as you got a spotter that's communicating and has the ability to communicate with you at all times. So that 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 made me happy because that actually still keeps us in the ability of being able to put these on, fly them, and enjoy a first-person view out of them. Yeah, we follow FAA guidelines 100%. And, and you know, uh, another guideline that Derek didn't bring up, which everybody obviously knows now, is no national parks. National forests are okay as long as you stay within the parameters. National parks are out, but um, you know, uh, people don't even uh, do uh, um, documentaries or movies in uh, national parks hardly anymore because all the rules are so stringent. So, you're making money or not? Um, for those that question on <laughs> whether or not we make money off of doing this or not, absolutely not. Claim a loss every year yet to make a dime off of this this is a hobby this is an enjoyment this is a passion that kelly and i have had our whole lives so you know the only people making money off of bigfoot's finding bigfoot the rest of us are in the hole <laughs> and if you're in this into this to make money you're not going to um we're into this to solve the modern day mystery and uh it, it's it's costing us a lot of money to do it um, we're not in it to make money, and we're not going to be able to make money unless we become Finding Bigfoot. Not going to happen because I don't want to be Finding Bigfoot because I actually want to find Bigfoot. <laughs> um, Carl, um, where to begin? Obviously, uh, F-550. Um, I had a hard time going back to a NASA, um, but I am back to actually running NASA flight controllers. Um, I have uh, an APM 2.5 that I've completely put together and flown GPS, etc. Um, I got a, the Cryer, it's a Cryus CW, MW, something like that, that I actually put together and had actually flying as well. That one was by far the hardest one for me to put together because I had never got into Adreno and, and, Okay, it wasn't that hard. I am a systems engineer. I'm a computer geek by trade, so it really wasn't that hard to figure out. But, you know, it's something that you have to upload firmware, make modifications, depending on what type of equipment you got. So that was kind of tough, but 
a, a great learning experience and if you are into RCs and modeling, do it. I recommend it highly. Um, been through quite a few. My first original I took Adams, my first original uh, radio uh, was a DX6i and that was just by recommendations of Adam. So buy one of these, they're cheap, they'll do everything you need to. They're six channel, you can get all your functionality off of Naza, being able to do whatever you got to do on them. Great, perfect little radio, absolutely loved it, but I had to move on. I've been through quite a few of them now. And I will say, hands down, for the money, you will never be able to replace. This is a Tyrannus. Fry Sky Tyrannus that I just picked up. Now, I haven't had it very long. But, welcome to Open TX. This thing is freaking awesome. Absolutely love this radio. Um, you're 250 bucks. Buy it. I, I recommend it highly. Comes with the case, the whole works. Um, Love the footage from the Phantom. Um, very easy to fly. I mean, you get the thing up and it almost flies itself. It is it is a very, very nice, uh, comfortable drone to fly that you don't worry too much about. Um, and any one of these, you get to a point when you're putting them together and you're uh, adjusting all your gains and getting it to fly your style. Um, there's a lot of, you know, these are together working drones. Um, I've lost multiple of them. My 250 that I put together for FPV and specifically for hiking um, got away from me and I, that's another thing up in the air gone. Somebody walked off with probably, but I lost it. Um, it's, it. It's actually a lot of money. It's a huge investment. You wreck a lot. You have to fix a lot. So if you're really going to do it, Unless you've got all the money in the world to pay somebody else to go fix them for you, um, I recommend buying a kit, build it, learn it from the ground up. When I first opened that box and I saw this thing staring at me and had, for the most part, never even seen one before, I looked at it and said, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? And just who I am, I nitpicked it, tore the thing apart, basically, looked up everything, read everything, and started on my path to where I am now. And I absolutely love this drone. This thing flies like a champ. Um, and uh, perfect timing. I just got it actually up and working. Because um, it's going to be going to an expedition that we have for a week. A little over a week in Northern California. So um, that's coming up here soon. So, God, looking forward to that. Love the place. When Adam, uh, 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 when he... When Adam so kindly donated um, a hexadrone to, to us, yeah, it was a donation, and uh, um, I, I manage 15 cameras now, and back then I was managing like 10, and uh, I knew I did not have time to manage the drone, and so I reached out to the team, and Derek being the tech guy that he is, I mean, he completely uh, motated to it. And then after using it a few times and stuff, the recon value of these things are just priceless. Um, it saves us so much tread on our feet. I mean, we can look on top of uh, mountaintops and so forth to see if there's anything worth hiking up there for. I mean, a lot of these places that we have to scout out on foot, it might take us a whole day to hike in and out. And Derek can put a drone up there and bring it back with about 20, 30 minutes of footage you know, in 20, 30 minutes. So, uh, you know, and, and then we see something up there like a mountaintop spring, which, you know, that's, you know, Bigfoot's a ridge walker that, you know, gives Bi that's Bigfoot it. an ability to stay up there and not have to come down because it's got a water source. Well, we want to go up and look at the water source, you know. We fly it over and we don't see structures. We don't see a water source, you know. We may not want to go up there. It saves us a lot of time and, uh, I really appreciate Adam for getting this into this, and I really appreciate Derek for taking this head on and managing the, the drones and the, the air, the air footage for us. The keep, recon. keep in mind, it's costed a lot of working time on a website, which is getting updated, trust me. But anyway, that's a whole other animal in itself. Yeah, Derek started out as a web designer, and of course he does expeditions 
and everything like all of us do, but his major contribution uh, was the web designer and uh, um, after uh, he started to get into these and stuff, so now he manages the website and he manages the drones. So, um, the end of the day, um, I got into these drones because of Bigfooting, I, period. That is, that is why I got into doing them and now I enjoy them. But you got to be prepared if you're going to go Bigfooting. I mean, most hobbyists and stuff have their, their workstation here, basically. You know, that they can come home to, got your magnifying glasses, your soldering irons, etc., 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 and just, just off the, just to mention it, this is actually the making of a frame that is just straight out of the mind of. Look at all the tools that my buddy that he's, Greg that he's accumulated between him and Greg in their uh, drone shop. Um, By the way, Greg uh, is making and selling drones, and Derek's uh, into building drones for Bigfooting. Yeah, but I would build a drone and sell it. Wouldn't even think twice about it. Well, the thing is, is with anyway, your Bigfoot experience, you know the type of drone that a Bigfooter will be looking for. Abs absolutely, and I will get more specific on that um, on the website. I'm sure I'll get a lot more detailed on exactly what I do just for myself, what helps me out. Um, what I want to bring up here actually is almost anything. Um, I'm, I'm a minute. I'm, I'm a bit of a freaking redneck. There is no question whatsoever, man. I grew up in an area that's just where it is. Damn proud of it. Um, Greg is even worse than I am when it comes to things, but Greg walks into a place. It don't matter where you are. Um, Greg showed up one day with a handful of Maverick chill straws. Just chill straws, you know, the little aluminum round straws. Bucket piece, he had a whole handful of them and built like four drones out of them that he was using them as the booms. Completely built it from the ground up without a frame, without anything, just out of his head. And I'll tell you, it was one of the best flying drones that I've ever seen and uh -huh. uh, well you know learning processes uh, it hit the dirt at about 60 <laughs> and blew up but it was cool so and this is just his next project that he's doing um, uh, we're also do other things um, we'll have a floating drone here before too long we already got boats that we flish out up on our local pond up here with our with our boats and a fishing pole on it. Um, going to be catching fish with our drone here soon. So whether I have to convert a boat or just make a floating drone or whatever I do. We show them what type of a drone they should probably uh, stick to in base camp and the ones that um, you would take big footing and then the, the cameras that you have with those. I, I learned the hard way or not necessarily the hard way. It was just very inconvenient and kind of a pain in the butt because I not only had a big huge external framed backpack on my back I, I bet you we got footage of it somewhere on one of our videos but I actually had our original squawk that I backpacked in on my back on my backpack he looked like a teenage like ninja, a ninja turtle teenage ninja turtle on this thing so um uh, f550 it's quite big um honestly it would be quite better really Better used at a base camp or someplace easily gotten to, um, taking your fort, you know, whatever. If you have the capabilities of getting it somewhere, it's great. But this is a base camp drone, um, honestly. Um, that simply put, just because of convenience of packing this bad dog around. And something I would like to add about uh, this the type of a drone. The the, the, the drones with more blades, you'd think they'd be noisier, but because they have, they don't have to work as hard to stay in the air. Actually, the more blades you have, the more silent your drone is. The six-blade drones are actually really quiet. They actually have a lot deeper hum to them. When you get a good, get mm -hmm. the gains on them really good. You got this. You just know when you hit that sweet spot because it. Just, and when you take out, it's cool. Uh, I very much enjoy it. Um, honestly, I, I did kind of distance a little bit on the backpacking, but this is a much easier backpack unit than 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 the Hex by by far. And even even this, other than for actual how light this thing is, um, 
it, it's still too big, um, but it is extremely light. And yes, we're resourceful, if you didn't notice. Um, these are hangers. I just use them as landing gear. Um, gave it elevation. I can throw a gimbal on the bottom of it. It keeps it out of its way. Um, it's unlike what anybody else is using. You ain't going to see it anywhere else. And, and yes, that, I just said ain't. And that gimbal's what you would throw a GoPro on? This actually takes a GoPro. It's just 2D. Um, it's not all 3D one, but uh, you know, this is what I actually have for either the uh, F450 or the 550 or this is an SK450 right here that it would actually go on to. Um, these are Alien X's and this, this one's actually Greg's that he put together. Um, we actually call it like a stealth. Um, let me put this down. This thing... Uh, it's got 1100 motors on it, 1100 kV motors on it. It's actually relatively light. Um, it's got plenty of space to put things. I like it. It's a good setup. It's a good looking drone. And he gets the lights on this thing going. And at night, yeah, I did just say at night. This thing is so cool. Just saying. Um, this thing looks like, you know, something coming up. Honestly, you got the Jersey Devil coming at you or something. It, it's pretty freaky. It is one of the coolest things, and you don't see anything else. It is straight black and a hums. It is a, a another. It's about a 500, I believe, is the size of this thing. But it is it is very very cool. Probably the best looking drone I've ever seen at night. It, it is very cool. Um, I had it. This would be one that's the same, like a like a base camp or something, just for the size of it. And again, it really just depends on your capabilities of going from one place to another. That's another Alien X that is up that uh, he put together for an uh, 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 old neighbor of his, um, buddy of his, that uh, is going to go to him. Um, oh, that's about it. Honestly... Um, I wish I had my 250 still here because I think the 250 is the ideal drone for for I can you can get your FPV gear on it. It's little, very light. Um, you're only talking, you know, maybe 1,300 milliamp to 1,800 milliamp batteries. So they're half the size. They're quite a bit smaller. A lot easier to backpack in, and you get a longer flight time out of them. And Honestly, um, the footage is pretty good, but I, I wish I had something like that for the fact that you can put some of these high-end receivers on, or even if you wanted to go a long distance on them, um, you know, again, the Tyrannus JR module in the back, so you can actually do the UHF modules and stuff to go long distance on them. Again, about best radio, I love it. Um, but... You know, that first, uh, that epic Bigfoot expedition, I wish I would have had my little 250 or something, because it's so easy to backpack, and you see something moving up there, boom, that thing is in the air, and it's up on that side hill, and they don't have the ability to sit there and hide behind a bush anymore. they got to move, and in a lot of areas of where we are, um, we're going to get them. At some point or another, we're going to get them. You know, it's just whether or not I can get a drone to them, faster than they can actually ditch it you know uh, trees bushes they are what they are man they get out of sight they're gone so it's just that simple um well i i think that touches base on most everything other than uh cameras um i did have a little like a 700 um fpv camera that i had on my 250 that went bye bye um it was actually a pretty nice little camera, very cheap, wasn't very much. But honestly, um, I picked up a Mobis. Um, reason I kind of like the Mobis or how the GoPro goes, uh, you can do a direct attached right to the back of the Mobis um, with the cable and straight to um, your, your transmitter for your FPV transmitter. And you're streaming exactly what you're looking at. It's tiny. 
Um, I got little hands for hell's sakes, and this thing is little, like two inches by an inch and a half or so. I mean, it's a little unit, very light. Great for FPV in. Um, this thing has, again, GoPro quality right here. And here's the man right here. We've been talking about him, Greg. Not I. Not I, huh? There goes Greg. Anyway, camera right there. Build the M3D or gimbal on it. And and what's the resolution on that camera? 1080. 1080 on That's both. That's better of them. than the GoPro. I have uh, the resolution on that. I mean, it has you know GoPro or better quality in my opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Clear as a bow. No Jello. No nothing. But you can get rid of Jello, honestly. Jello, and in just my experience, especially for money, freaking earplugs, earplugs, dollar twenty-seven at Walmart, earplugs. You don't have to go to Walmart; you can go anywhere. He puts them behind the camera, and it absorbs the shock of the vibration. Absorbs the and vibration. Takes away and the gets jello. Rid of that gel. That's how I fixed it in the first place. I've never changed. Uh, there's no reason to change for something more expensive to me, as far as I'm concerned. Simple, sweet. It's the best kind there is. More cordage for your um, drones. These guys are like drone heaven over here. Again, again, uh, gimbal for the hex drone. It's and the nice thing about the uh, gimbal is um, a lot of times you can have the spotter. Um, and and, and, and I'm, I'm saying this because I've, I've been in that situation. Derek's flying the drone and we actually have a little screen where we can see through the camera and we can actually control the gimbal so if we see something we want to direct uh, the camera on we can swing it towards the gimbal you know he's concentrating on flying he may not see something on the ground that we want to recon like a bigfoot or or a mountaintop spring or whatever and we can direct the camera towards it and then also because the faa requires that he has a spotter those of us uh, sitting there spotting, you know, it's like, hey, we see something here, and we send him off in that direction. I love President Gimbal. President Gimbal, huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I, I personally like keeping an eye on the drone, personally. Um, I like having a visual on it. I like having a tripod up with, with, a, with a monitor. If I need to see first person from it, I got a monitor, but physically having my eyes on that drone at this point is still a, my preferred method of flying, period. I like that, period. Um, other than that, you know, um, you got pictures, I mean, FPV, your transmitter and receiver. FPV, for those that aren't technical, first person view. And that means he's looking through his goggles and he's not flying by looking at the, the drone. He's actually goggles. the pilot. He's looking through the camera and flying as if he was in the actual drone. Which is actually cool though. No matter what my preferred flight method is. I just don't want to lose any more drones. <laughs> you got quite the collection. He can actually afford to lose some, but no, yeah, I it's expensive. Can afford to lose them. <laughs> All right, well, if that's all you got, I, I think so. All right, well, hey, keep on watching because uh, we're going to keep on squatching. <laughs> <laughs>